Welcome to chapter 3, section 4. Um, in this section, what we're going to do is take a look at actions um, and routes. We're going to create it so we can have uh, you know, our website and then slash posts and slash new or slash edit, uh, just different actions that we want to be able to do on the posts object or the post controller or resource, uh, whatever you want to call it. So I'm at my local server and I have the Rails server running. So just open a command line and type in Rails S and that'll turn on your server and then you can go to localhost port 3000. Now I want to open another command line so I can actually, so I can use it because the one that runs the server is, uh, you can't use it. So we just want to make sure we go to our, um, our sites our Ruby, my Ruby blog folder. Now, I don't know why, but for some reason with this command line, if, if I try to go to sites, my Ruby blog, all like this on one line, it doesn't let me, and it, and it looks like it's not putting the slashes in here, and I'm not sure why. So, what, on Windows and using Rails installer, which we are, you have to just go to sites first and then just change the directory to my Ruby blog. I don't know why it's just a little glitch or, or a bug or something. But um, So now what I want to do is I want to run the rake command. I want to run rake, um, rake routes. And what that does is it'll, it'll just show us all the routes for our, um, for our posts. You'll see we have Home index is our home page, and posts index is the default page for posts. So if you just go to um, our website slash posts, that's the index page. Just like any other index is usually your home page on, on any kind of website. And then we have the create. We have create and we have new, and there's a difference between them. New is will allow us to go to post slash new and, and it will be a form to create a new post. Um, create is, is not an actual page, it's, it's a background process. When you go to the new page and you press save, that's the create command. It then hands it off to the create. So, and there's a couple others like that. Uh, edit and update are the same thing. If you go to post slash up edit, you'll have the edit form for the post. Um, and then when you click save, it'll run the update action, which actually does the actual process of saving it. And what else do we have here? We have show, and that's used for displaying just one post as opposed to a list of them or a blog roll or something like that. Um, and then destroy is just delete. If you go, if you go to edit and then you click the delete button, that hands it off to the destroy action. Um, now what we want to do is we want to create each of these actions in our post controller. So open up your my Ruby blog folder in, in Windows or Linux if you're using Linux or Mac um, and we want to go into app controllers and then we want to open the post controller. Now where we left off in the last section we just had created the index action or index method. Um, those words are really used interchangeably. Uh, actions, uh, methods, controllers. So what we want to do is we want to create these all these actions, all seven of them. Um, and we already have index so next we want to do I like to put it in a certain order, um, so I'll do edit, and then um, create, and if you've worked in other programming languages, um, there's a chance that you, when you think of a method or a function, you think of um, parentheses. You would normally have the function name and then open close parentheses. Well, in Ruby, we use this D, E, F, and end instead of using parentheses. And we should actually space these out. 
So next we'll do, um, wait a minute, I wanted to do new, new create, and then we'll do edit. And then update. And then show. And then destroy. Is that all of them? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. So now we have all our all our actions for the post controller um, created. So what we want to do now is save the file, and now we want to create a view for not all of these, but for the ones that we can actually see. For instance, we have the index. Um, we also want the new. We want the edit the show and the no not the destroy the um, wait that's it yeah show new edit and index are the four views that we need so go back to your folder structure um, I think I must have closed mine where is it okay and sites my Ruby blog and you want to go into the app folder and then into views and then into posts and you'll see we already have the index so now I'm going to create whoop not a folder I'm going to create a text document and I'm going to name this new dot index not index sorry new dot html dot ERB and ERB just stands for embedded Ruby which allows us to, to paste in Ruby code into our HTML code so now I want to do the edit dot HTML dot ERB and finally I want the show view and this will just show an, an individual post. Oh. Why do I, I keep writing index? I don't know why. All right, so that's it for our post views for now. So now that we created the views and we have them specified in the controller, we have the actions in the controller like this. Now we should be able to go to um, posts dot new and it's just a blank page because we have nothing in our view so what we can do is go back into here into these views so we have edit.html so let's just do um, an h1 edit post and save that and then we'll open um, the new and we will do h1 um, add new post save that and then go into show and um, re really this would probably have the h1 tag would probably be the name of the post uh, which we don't have so we'll just do sample post and later on that'll be filled in with dynamic content from the database from the model so if we reload this we have add new post if we go to edit we have the name of our post and then if we go to show um, really this wouldn't be you'd actually have post slash show slash and then the and then the ID number of the post so it would be something like that and then it would show the information the fields from post 12 okay so you won't have just post show so that's um, we get our, we get our routing set up for the post controller so what else do I want to do here oh I know what I wanted to do I want to show you how we can create a variable in the controller and display it dynamically in a view so what I mean is we'll go to index dot html dot erb where we have this static content here um, so what I want to do is replace 
the content here with a variable from the controller that just grabs it grabs it. I'll show you what I mean so I'm just gonna cut this out here and I want to make sure I'm in index in the index action because this is the index view and what I'm gonna do is define a variable but I'm gonna use the at sign okay and I'm just gonna write um, we'll just name it content uh, content first and then we'll set it to a string of this paragraph and you want to have this well you don't need the semicolon but I'd suggest it just because um, I don't know because I use it in every other programming language and I'm also going to go and get this as well this content cut that out and I'm gonna paste that into a variable called content second and you want to make sure you have quotes around the paragraph it's a string so I'm gonna save this and if we go to index and I just leave it like this and save it and reload obviously our, our paragraphs are gone so what I'm gonna do here is open some Ruby tags and if you've worked with um, something like PHP or A ASP then I mean this is pretty much the same idea for tagging so we want to have the less than sign and then the percent sign and if we want to display it on the page then we want to have this equal sign as well um, but you can also Im embed Ruby code without the equal sign but it won't be displayed on the page so here I want to use the variable that we created content one and then to close it you just want to do another percent sign and a greater than sign so if I copy this here and then change this to content 2 I'll save that and go over here and reload and nothing happens <laughs> uh, let me see what did I do wrong here um, oh <laughs> I call the content first and content second. Sorry about that. All right, save that and reload. And there's our text. Now, ultimately, what we're going to do is these the variables we create like this um, are going to be equal to some some data from the database. So we're not going to. Uh, statically put our text in here like this this will go to a function in the model that will grab the the content from the database and put it in the variable and then we can use the variable embedded in the HTML so uh, it's it, it's it's kinda simple when you think about it I mean the the controller gets the data from the model and then passes it to the view uh, that's basically what we're doing here so I think that's a good place to stop now. Um, in the next chapter, we're going to be doing, we're going to be going into the models and and how exactly we, we would get this data from the database.